Why is Beta Flight 4.3 not out yet, Blunty? Well, uh, a few reasons, but uh, uh, some of the, a lot of those reasons are covered in a video that we've got from Mr. Lyman, or as uh, as uh, he's called in the video, Limon. Limon. Uh, Welcome back to the Limon. channel, guys. And um, but mm. Lyman has uh, Ivan Evamov. Lyman is one of the developers who's been working on the configurator. He may he did the well, presets. It's a, uh, it's a lemon, Blunty. That's why he's Limon. It's a lemon. It's the fruit. Yes. Okay, okay, yes. sorry. I thought I thought it was important <laughs> we get that straight. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, he's got a video here that he talked to a bunch of the other devs who are working on some of the core stuff, and he dug into uh, what the heck is going on um, and why there's a problem uh, with Betaflight 4.3. What's taking so long? And is it is it a problem? You know, what's all the issues? And so, yeah. he covers it really well. Um, I love his videos. Um they always have some fun elements, and he makes a lot of jokes during them, but it's still get a lot of great information. So if you're a little bit nerdy and you like a bunch of core information about cool beta flight stuff, his videos are great. I mean, this is no exception. But we're going to cover a little bit, kind of a breakdown of what the issues are. Um, and so it seems like a lot of the problems stem, um, and I say problems, but they're really just bugs that are, you know, they're trying to fix, right? Um, stem from Steve, Steve Evans, who... Uh, went in and fixed, essentially fixed the scheduler. So in beta flight, we have a thing called the scheduler, right? And just like a calendar or anything else, um, you know, you've got a list of tasks that need to be done. And beta flight is scheduling those tasks. But the problem is in 4.2, beta flight used averaging to decide how long a task was going to take. Because there's no other way for it to know how long a task would take. So if an OSD task takes, you know, 30 milliseconds this time and 50 milliseconds this time and 35 milliseconds this time and 55 the next time, it's going to average all those numbers together and it'll use an averaged value for when it decides how long that task will take and it schedules the next task. I, so I, something. I uh, think I see what you're, can, can I, can we back up a second? So sure. let's say you're running your PID loop at eight kilohertz or four kilohertz. The idea is that you absolutely must finish everything that you need to do before the next PID loop. You have a window of time based on your PID loop rate. And yeah. the number one thing you have to do is calculate the PIDs and fly the quadcopter. And then you've got everything else that you need to do, like check the OSD, read the, read the sticks from the receiver, and a million other things. And I think, am I right? Is what you're getting at that those things might not all fit within one Correct. PID loop time? So we have to decide, are we going to yeah. service the OSD this loop time or, well, or are we going to yeah. just move on right and part of the problem is that beta flight has no way of knowing that because it only knows averaging like it doesn't have any way to predict how long this osd step is going to take because it's just saying like hey go do this osd thing and then there's a chunk of time there that has that and once is it, random once it starts you can't be just like you know what i changed my mind come back right. you have to wait so for like, it to complete yeah, so there were issues, or or maybe you would cut it off and then start something else because you assumed it was done in the scheduler. So that OSD task that should have been finished doesn't get finished because it's cut off for the next PID loop task. Oh, and start. now like your OSD is in some weird state. Right, exactly. Stuff like that, okay. right? And maybe it'll only now and then, or maybe it gets dropped sometimes. And so something that we're seeing, or that something that is seen, is if you're running 8 kilohertz in 4.2 on any processor, um, you're dropping one-eighth of your gyro signals. Like, they're just not making it into the loop. And this is because the scheduler doesn't know how long it takes for it to sample the gyro. That seems like the kind of a big deal. Yes. And so that's why we're still on RC. As a, as a core idea, this is why. Because there were so many changes needed to break down the scheduler tasks. Essentially, what happened is Steve went in and said, instead of, hey, let's do this OSD update, it broke the OSD update into parts. And then all the parts have estimated times for each part to ac be accomplished. So by, by breaking each task into smaller parts, you can get a more granular estimate of how long yes. the task is going to take as a whole. Correct. And do a yeah. better job of deciding what you need to be doing right now and whether you can finish it in the time allotted. Exactly. Yeah, how much time you have. And, 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 and it can also mean it also means that when you have these specific tasks broken out, you can guarantee that specific ha uh, tasks are done. So And that's the important like, thing because like reading the gyro kind of a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, so it can it can now they can now say like, "Hey, these set of tasks that do this gyro work can now be always guaranteed to happen because we know that 
you know, how long they take on average, but they're only a tiny piece versus instead of estimating 40 milliseconds, maybe you're estimating three milliseconds or five milliseconds. And it's a lot easier to give that room and those windows. And when you're cutting things off, you know what you're cutting off better and things like that. So yeah, well, it made the whole system better. But unfortunately, when you break everything into tiny chunks, that affects everything that's broken into tiny, chunk, tiny chunks. Right. And that means that basically all the software was broken down like this. And that means it created a ton of bugs and issues with how the scheduler handled all these tasks and how long each thing took and all those kind of things. And that had to be worked out over time. And so while it seems like all this happened in early RC, what really happened was this was over two years. This was happening. And this is, we're seeing the trail end, the tail end of all the scheduler changes. Well, that's, uh, that's, what, that's what's confusing about it to me. Hold on one second though. Yeah. Rick LeBlanc points out a good thing. It's not just that it, Rick LeBlanc says, if it's more granular, you can spread the task over several loops. So if yeah. servicing the OSD would normally take 100 milliseconds and you don't have enough time to do that, you could s break that into three parts of 33 milliseconds each or whatever and spread that over three loops and you're still updating or, the OSD plenty. Yeah, or you could say I've got, um, you know, I'm over the next eight updates, I've got, you know, 800 milliseconds of free time. So I'm going to, and that we're obviously, that's way too big of a number, but yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. We're just saying that, um, basically the idea is that if you've got these extra chunks of time, maybe this one, you can update the OSD and the next one, you can update the, these two things and the Soft next one, cereal. you can update these two things. Right. Exactly. And then we can move back around and keep them all updated well, all the time. Right? But as Captain Bry points out in the chat, when you're dealing with time scales so small, it is really hard to debug, especially when you're sort of spreading the tasks out. It's not just like, I'm going to go service the OSD. You're doing a whole bunch of things, not exactly in parallel per se, but maybe a little bit in parallel. And, and so it's very, very difficult for them to debug. And that leads me, like, here's the thing that's confused me about this. And it's going to relate to the rant that we have scheduled for the end of the program. Uh, it seemed to me like Betaflight was 4.3 was nearly ready to release. I don't know if it was in release candidate or not. And then suddenly it seemed to me like suddenly someone went, you know what? Let's just rewrite the whole scheduler. And then everything was thrown in the loop and we got months and months of delay. Is that am I just completely off base there? I, I think what happened is there were a bunch of things that were all scheduled to happen with changes to the scheduler and such. And some of those didn't get completed or totally fixed until during the RC. That's that's like what I can see from the history, but it's not super clear to me. What is super clear to me is Steve has been working on this for a long time. And so a lot of these changes have happened over time and have been developed through um, yeah, different other changes and stuff. So I think it may have just been happenstance with how everything worked out. <laughs> the um, I, do know that, I do know that the ELRS, um, the ELRS SPI code was a big factor to show that there needed to be more fixes in the scheduler because basically right. it wasn't lining up properly with the scheduler and there was a bunch of issues. I believe that was like RC1, um, stuff like that. So, um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh, so part of the reason that there's been a big delay, I think that we could split this question into two parts, which is number one, why did Betaflight 4.3 take so long to get into the release candidate stage? And it's been a long time. Betaflight has released in the past at about a six month window. There have been longer and shorter times in its history, but there was a period where it was about every six months for a couple, you know, I think maybe two or three times. And maybe a year window might seem sort of reasonable. And there were over two years now. And part of the reason for that is that this scheduler rewrite was is just really hard and complicated. Right. And it's not like there's a team of 50 guys working on it. It's just like, it seems like there's just like basically one guy. <laughs> Maybe yeah. a, a, some other people bug checking it. Um, but the other question is, now that we are in the release candidate, why is it taking so long? Uh, and that question, I think, is a little more complicated and relates to our rant. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, you could go check out Ivan Efimov's video linked in the video description if you want a more in-depth discussion on the things that are changing and the things that have taken a while. The bottom line is that there are two things. They keep finding bugs and need to fix the bugs, which that's fair. The other thing is that they keep adding features. We'll get yes. to that. 